So we're going to move on to uh, the forefoot and uh, talk about what really has been my passion for the last 10 years, which is trying to unlock the problems of lesser metatarsal phalangeal joint uh, instability and issues uh, that I think are one of the most common problems that we deal with on a daily basis and also one of the great enigmas for foot and ankle surgeons. When we look at plantar plate problems, we look at forefoot problems, I think it's really important to understand how we evaluate, how do we examine, how do we come to a proper diagnosis. So when you first have a plantar plate injury, you're going to see a local, uh, a location and subtle deformity of the toe. So when you see uh, this picture in the upper right hand, you're starting to see a little medial deviation of the toe, but also the patient's going to have a loss of toe purchase and plantar edema. So the in early injury, there's going to be some edema uh, in that problem. The most classic way that you can define whether you have a plantar plate problem is through the drawer maneuver. In the bottom left, you're seeing a normal drawer on this particular patient. And on the upper right of their left foot, this is an abnormal drawer. It's unstable. There are several things that you are trying to identify with this test. Number one is you're looking at gross instability. And you can see gross instability in this particular video. However, you're also looking for pain. So one foot may have a little bit more instability than the other, but it may have much more pain. So be appreciative of how much pain there is when you do this test. And it's very important to compare the left foot versus the right foot when performing this test. And this is a, typically, as I showed before, what a typical presentation of a plantar plate uh, pathology is. That second toe is sitting elevated because the plantar plate is not fully engaged. This is an uh, artistic representation of where the tears usually, usually occur. And when I say that, this is, the tears are usually transverse tears at the base of the phalanx. Usually some percentage, you know, 50% tear, and sometimes it's a complete tear. Um, but they're usually a transverse tear with occasional longitudinal extensions, but they're usually transverse right at the base of the phalanx. The incision uh, is made through the skin and then just to the extensor apparatus. And then an incision is made either between the tendons or to one side of the tendons and then to retract them. It is not a lot of dissection. It's literally through skin, through extensor apparatus, get down to the joint, and this is the amount of exposure that you initially need. Then there are some very, very key things through your uh, dissection that you need to do to get great exposure. And I promise you that as I'm taking you through this, these are a bunch of mistakes that I've made in the past that I've kind of figured out. So one of the most important things is rele releasing the collaterals off of the phalanx. So I release the medial and lateral collateral off of the phalanx, not off of the metatarsal. You need to leave the collaterals fully intact to the metatarsal. The collaterals are important stability and blood supply to the metatarsal head. So I never release the collaterals off the metatarsal. Once we've released the plantar plate, there are devices that many companies now have that you can grab the plantar plate and put sutures into it. This picture doesn't completely represent the way in which I would suggest you grab the plantar plate. This shows you just grabbing the edge of the plantar plate. I usually grab somewhere between 6 and 10 millimeters of, of plantar plate. I go very deep and grab a lot of plantar plate because I want to advance quite a bit of the plantar plate. Much like when you do a brostrum repair of the ankle. You don't just cut the uh, ATFL and capsule and put them right back together. You do a pants over vest. Well, in this case, we don't really do a pants over vest, but we're going to grab and advance a significant amount of the tissue. And then we're going to get these sutures in, and then I'll show you more in a moment. 